Hey guys, welcome back. I am running out to look for some more cherry tomatoes. I am getting ready to make a roasted cherry tomato sauce. Look guys, it is so good. I made some and I had it in the freezer and I pulled it out, I don't know, like a month or so ago. And it is like the best tomato sauce you'll ever have in your life. So we're gonna come out here and see what other ones have ripened up since I checked. Oh, look at this. So beautiful. I'm gonna get closer before it takes off again. And there it goes. Back to what I was saying. It is a very good sauce. I just don't have enough cherry tomatoes to actually can it. I'll have enough to make a meal. Depending on how many tomatoes I can harvest today, I might be able to put some in the freezer for another time. Alright, so let's get picking. I probably should make mention, I'm probably going to use some of these other tomatoes that are a little bit bigger. I'm not sure what they are because most of these tomatoes are extras that people gave us. I'm not exactly sure what they're called, um, but I'm going to use them because they're the smaller ones as well and they'll work just as fine. This is a tomato hornworm that has wasp larvae on it. It is now a host for all those wasps, which is good. We want that. That tomato hornworm will not hurt anymore. Don't touch. They will not hurt anymore of my tomato plants, which actually this year there's not been a ton of them. I haven't seen a ton of damage. There's been a little bit, but nothing, nothing crazy. We've had some years where they've done a lot of damage. For this cherry tomato um, sauce, I have the oven preheated at 300 and my original recipe that I have on the website, um, which we linked below, calls for five cups of the cherry small type of tomatoes. I, I went through all of them and as you see in Eliana and I was measuring, it ended up being about 10 cups so I'm going to be able to make a double batch. We have olive oil, onion powder, garlic powder. Salt and pepper, and then um, my original recipe calls for dried Italian seasoning. However, I don't have any, so I'm just putting some basil with it. Uh oh, what's happening? While we were outside picking tomatoes, I grabbed some basil, so I'm just going to use this fresh. When I was going through the tomatoes, I made sure none of them were split and real yucky, and I went ahead and took off all the stems because you don't need those. onion powder, now we're getting the garlic powder, and you can do salt and pepper to taste, so I'm just going to, we're just going to kind of do a little sprinkle, sprinkle. Yeah. That's good. Yep, just like that. Back in this, really 
right, so there's our bowl of goodies. We're going to stir it around in just a second. And I now, turn it on. Nope. And now I'm just going to add some of this basil. Uh-oh. Uh it's okay. What's that mean? I'm just kind of guessing how much basil. Yeah. I take a picture of it. It's all mixed up, going in the oven for about 40 minutes. I'm gonna put it in the oven, I'll stir it periodically, and I'm gonna set the timer for about 35 minutes. What we're looking for is the skin to be real wrinkled, and then we'll know that it's done. <laughs> Alright, so it's been about 25 minutes. I just um, went ahead and turned the temperature up to 325 so I can finish cooking. And the t I went ahead and set my timer for another 10 minutes. I'm going to show you what it looked like at this point. You can see that one's kind of getting that crinkly look and they're starting to break apart a little bit more. So we're getting there. Not quite yet, but we're starting to see where they're getting cooked enough. I've pulled out my tray, I've been letting it set for a few minutes, that way it doesn't like crack my container when I go to blend it up. Now I'm filling it to the max line and I'm going to uh, blend them up. there you have it it's this nice beautiful orange color I don't mind that there's a little bit of like you can still kind of see a little bit of the skins that doesn't bother me if you have somebody that doesn't care for that you just would blend it longer I wish you could smell my kitchen it smells so good right now I'm gonna save some of it and use it with some um, I'm just gonna mix it in with some meat that I'm cooking up for this evening's dinner and the rest of them I'm gonna put in the freezer because we just had pasta and I'm not gonna be having any this week and I'm sure if you have cherry tomato plants you probably have a few extra to try this recipe out and see how much you like it one thing I wanted to add is if you don't want to add the onion powder and the garlic powder while you have it in the oven roasting, you can add it when you're getting ready to mix it. When you're getting ready to blend it, that works just as fine. And I have been seeing lots of people using their bigger tomatoes to roast that way and make sauce as well, which will you be able to do. I just know that I'm going to be making a lot, and so mine are going to just go in a big roaster. For now, this has used up the extra cherry tomatoes we had and got them used so they don't go bad because cherry tomatoes can go bad real quick if you don't have any cherry tomatoes and you want to try it i've seen them at the farmer's market we just were there yesterday and they had lots of them and it doesn't take a whole lot of effort to make it and you have this wonderful sauce to enjoy all right until next time bye now